Good morning again. I want to welcome you back to the study of the second church, the Smyrna church, the persecuted church. Before we get into that study, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for allowing us to be here. We ask you once again, our dear Father, that you will bless each and every one of your children. We pray, Father, that you will give us listening ears and an understanding heart and a comprehending mind. That we may hear and understand, Father, what the Spirit is saying unto the church today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, the persecuted church. You will find information about this in Revelation 2, verses 8 through 11. Verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, say the first and the last, which was dead and alive. So we see here that the Lord Jesus introduces himself to this church as the first and the last, and the one who was dead and is alive. And he did this to give them the assurance that though they would die because of persecution, they will live eternally as he is. The word Smyrna means myrrh in Greek. And it signifies suffering, especially death. It also references a sweet perfume used in embalming bodies. One of the wise men brought the Lord Jesus this in Matthew 2.11. The believers in Smyrna were discriminated against. They were poor and they were heavily persecuted. The Lord Jesus has nothing negative to say about them. But he introduces himself here once again as the first and the last, and he that was dead and is alive. Verse 9, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. So here the Lord commends them for their works. It was right in his sight. He also says, I know that poverty, this word poverty in Greek means great lack. They became very, very poor because they were robbed of their goods during persecution and affliction. This still happens today and it will happen uh, in the future. In some nations, as soon as a non-Christian family accepts the Lord Jesus, the rest of the village ostracized them. They robbed them of their belongings, kicked them out of the village, take their land, their houses, and kick them out on the street. This happened a lot in Eastern nations. This is something that Western Christians really don't know anything about because we have not had such experiences. But I can assure you the days are coming. The Lord assured them that he knows their suffering. In Isaiah 63, verse 9, it says that we are not alone in our sufferings. It says in all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. So, in our suffering, which will come and is coming, we're not alone. The Lord Jesus is with us. The bishop of this church was burned at the stake. His name was Polycarp. When Saul persecuted the church, Jesus asked him, why persecute me? Acts 9 4. This church was materialistically poor, but spiritually rich. Proverbs 8 18. When we are materialistically rich, we have no need for God. The poor will seek God because they are scarce. They are materialistic poor, and so they began to seek the Lord. There were false brethren in the church as well, just like today. Romans 2, 28 and 29 teaches us that Paul distinguished between false Jews and, tr and true Jews. True believers don't just follow a religion but practices the command of the Lord Jesus. Don't just read them, practice them. For all believers, the Lord Jesus called them 
belong to the church of Satan. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. The Lord Jesus encourages them not to fear suffering, because he will be with them. Don't fear. And this is similar to the encouragement Paul gave in Corinth. Acts 18, 9, and 10. People will attack us, but there will be people to come and comfort. The number 10 signifies trials. Daniel 1, 12, and Numbers 14, 22. 10 days of tribulation does not literally mean 10 days, but 10 periods of persecution by the Roman emperors over a long period of time. Let's look at some of these emperors. Nero started it in 54 AD, as actually between 54 and AD and 68 AD. Domitian, 81 to 96 AD. Trajan, 98 to 117 AD. Machio Aurelius, 161 to 180 AD. Severus, 193 to 211 AD. Maximinius, 235 to 238 AD. Decius, 249 to 251 AD. Valerian, 253 to 260 AD. Aurelian, 270 to 275. And Diocletian, 284 to 305. Approximately 250 years of persecution. So, this was a church of Mark. Being a martyr is a very, very, very high call. Very high call. In fact, um, recently the Lord uh, had us attending a martyr's conference where we were taught intricacies about being a martyr for the Lord. Because some will are called and some will volunteer. So it's a very high call because when a person is martyred for the Lord Jesus, he or she is actually taking on the same same position like the Lord Jesus, because the Lord Jesus was martyred for the entire world. So when someone is martyred in the body of Christ, just like how many, the whole world has an opportunity to be saved, somebody is being saved. So a martyr usually gives his or her life for someone else. And it's a very high call in the kingdom of heaven. Well, the reward for this is great. As martyrs, some of them were fed to the lions. Many cheered. The most famous was Polycarp. He was a bishop of the Smyrna church. There's actually a movie on his life called Qua Vadis. You probably can find it on YouTube. The Roman governor offered him his freedom if he would renounce Christ and curse him, he responded, for 80 and six years have I served Christ and he has done me nothing but good. How then could I curse him, my Lord and my Savior? 8160, he was burned alive at the stake. So believers were whipped to shreds till their veins and their arteries were exposed. They endured because they were ordained for that. So myrrh, which is the Greek for Smyrna, signifies the spirit of meekness, which comes as a result of suffering. Moses was the meekest man because of all the suffering he endured, Numbers 12, 3. Smyrna shunned with meekness because of the suffering she endured. In Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, it says, I am meek and lowly because he was suffering so much persecution, the Lord Jesus. In Philippians 2, 28, the Lord Jesus was faithful unto death. In May 22, 2020, the Lord spoke to the man of God about persecution. And this is what he said. As I was with Polycarp, so would I be with you. Be faithful 
as I was. I was the first witness, a martyr. Another thing, the word martyr means witness. Witness before my father and before my angels. So should my people be. Witness a good confession for my God and my angels. Polycarp, together with my company of martyrs, will come to fellowship with you, the remnant, during your days of trials and persecution. Be faithful even unto death. So we can see from this particular church that some are going to die. The Lord is not going to deliver everyone. So we must be prepared mentally and spiritually. Amen. Another part of the scripture said, be faithful unto death. That's the martyr's creed. All of us, children of God, will face death. The Lord Jesus was obedient unto death, Philippians 2, 8. When we refuse to take the mark of the beast, we will be beheaded. Saints and angels will come and strengthen the martyrs. In Luke 22, 33, an angel came to strengthen the Lord Jesus. What is the reward? A crown of life. Philippians 2, 8. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. When he is tried, he will receive the crown of life. We will be hunted like animals. The woman will be persecuted. Revelation 12. And we'll talk about more about the woman when we get to that chapter. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So overcomes, the overcomer's promise is that he who overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. Revelation 26, 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. And such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. What is the second death? The second death is to be cast in the lake of fire and eternally separated from the Lord. Revelation 21 8. Death and hell will also be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 14. Amen. That brings us to the end of the study of the Smyrna church, the suffering church. And so far we see there is a church that lost its first love. And there is a church that will go through suffering. And remember, when we talk about the church, we're not just talking about the corporate body. We're talking about each individual person. Amen. So we want to take these studies and examine ourselves to see whether we are ready. Have we left our first love? Number one. And number two, are we ready and willing to suffer for our faith and for the Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord promises that your reward will be Pray. Amen. So it is time for us now to strengthen ourselves in our, in our faith. I know we see many things going on around the world, and many are surprised, and many are trying to stop what's going on. But that is not what the Lord Jesus is telling us. The Lord Jesus has been warning us since 2019 that we should prepare ourselves. So everything that is written in the book will come to pass. Time has come now when we are close to the coming of the Lord. And before the Lord Jesus comes, there are many events that must unveil themselves, unfold and unveil themselves in our world. We should keep on praying. We should encourage one another. We should strengthen our faith. And we should be ready. We should make sure we are ready for whatever happens. Amen. Amen. I thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.
where we will talk about the Pergamos Church. The Pergamos Church. The church that embraced false doctrine. The church that embraced Babylonianism. Catholicism. That's the next church. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.